Hey guys, Tace here from the Code with Taste channel. Uh, I've got a great video for you today to help you level up your code. Uh, I really wanted to save this for some more advanced uh, C sharp topics, but I really want you guys to get into the habit of um, doing things in a better way. And an important thing in software development uh, development is making sure your code is um, readable. Sometimes using if uh, else and switch statements can make it less readable uh, and a pain to refactor or just having re uh, a really complicated design really um, let me give you a, um, a really simple example to show you this in effect so let's create a, a simple condition statement that prints out to the console the payment methods of an account okay so let's have an enum of all the supported payment methods okay so we'll create an enum public enum uh, payment methods okay and we'll um, have uh, three supported payment methods uh, one called Apple Pay I'm sure you've heard of that before Google Pay and cash cool okay now let's create a class that will consume this payment methods or these payment methods. Um, so public class accounts or account. Um, need to spell class correctly. Okay, that will have um, a constructor. which takes in two fields, uh, one for name and the other for, actually let's give it a, let's call it payment method. And we will say payment method, payment method, Ooh. payment method, payment method, perfect. Okay, and let's use IntelliSense to uh, create uh, these uh, fields for us. Cool. Oh, no, I don't want a property for that one. I want a field for it. Quick field. Great. Cool. Okay, so... Um, cool, so we have our um, enum and then we have our accounts. Now let's create an instance of this class. So we'll say if our account one equals new account and let's give it a um, name of um, Michael Bubbles and we will say the payment method is payment method let's say they are using the payment method of Apple Pay cool um, okay so now let's check uh, like um, actually, let's chuck in um, a conditional statement to print out a result based on whatever payment method that the account um, is currently on. So we can say, um, let's go with if account one dot payment method. Wait, why am I not getting? Oh, I see what I've done wrong. I've made these um, fields. I should have made them properties. Let's let's undo that. Let's make these properties actually. Uh, that's gonna be anyway. Let's make these properties so that we can access them outside the um, class name. Uh, we'll go with this at name. And we can say again prop we'll go payment method and there we go. Cool. Okay, so now when we access the payment method outside of the class, we can say dot payment method. Cool. And we can say equals payment method dot Apple Pay. And then what we want to do is if it's Apple Pay. And we want to print something like, um, what do we want to print? Let's print payment made. 
Raymond made by payment method dot Apple Pay. Perfect. Okay. Now let's um, copy and paste this just to to obviously make it easier for the other payment methods as well. So we want um, what are the other ones? Google Pay dot Google Pay. Google Pay, and then we also want um, cash as well, don't we? Because the customer can pay by cash as well. Cash. Oh, the account can pay by cash. There we go, Ca uh, cash. And then finally, we just want uh, a generic one here, just for the sake of it. To say if if uh, we can say payment made by unknown method. Payment made by unknown source. Cool. Okay. Um, as you can see already, it's uh, very verbose. We've got all these lines of code here. You know, one condition, two condition. Um, we can, if, even if we wanted to turn this into a um, switch statement, just to make it in, in say we wanted to say, oh, the switch statement might be better because it's more readable. It's still, there's still a lot going on here, okay? And in this scenario, we're only supporting um, three payment methods, you know, but what if we uh, wanted to support PayPal, Klarna, Direct Debit? You can already see that this uh, um, conditional uh, op operate these conditional well these conditional statements is obviously going to expand with our um the more payment methods we support okay um let's run this first of all to see if it works <laughs> so it does work oh let's put a space in between these so it does work the way we want it to it's just that obviously we can do this in a better way i think uh, let's run that again just make sure that's correct payment made by Apple Pay which is correct because that's what we uh, initialized this uh, uh, new class with cool okay so let's use polymorphism and a pattern to clean this up okay let's create a payment factory uh, class and I want to shout out uh, uh, T sharp corner for this pattern as well because it's a very good pattern okay so let's go down here and create this uh, payment factory class class payment factory now in this class we're going to create something that I haven't discussed with you yet collections um, let's make this class static actually but you can make it an instance class if you wanted to unit if you wanted to have your unit tests a lot easier but let's make it static in for this example um, now yes I haven't discussed with you collections but um, and I haven't discussed with you lazy loading either or, or lazy collections but um, in this instance we're just going to use a collection called a lazy dictionary and basically what it is is just a collection that allows us to store um, you know items inside of it so um, in this instance we want to store um, a key it's a key value pair storage basically uh, we want to store a payment method as the key and then we want to store string as the item a, a string value as the item okay and we're going to call this payment and we're going to initialize it to null okay what is missing here what have i done wrong here that's what i've done wrong cool okay um and then we're going to need a constructor uh, a static constructor okay Okay, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to use that to um, initialize or, or load up our um, dictionary. Okay, and we're going to do that through invoking a method, uh, which we're going to call load, load payments. Okay, that method doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. Um, why am I getting 
this red squiggly? What's going on? Oh, of course, yeah. Yes, we don't need to do that. Okay, so um, that's fine. So we've got that, uh, and we've got this load payments um, method here. Okay, now for the load payment method, we are going to, uh, first of all, set it to return a dictionary of a uh, dictionary of payment method and a string. That's what we want it to return instead of an object. Okay, and in this, we're just going to use it to obviously um, create a dictionary. We're going to create a temporary dictionary in here. So let's do that. Uh, we'll go for temp equals new dictionary payment method. So we'll create a temporary dictionary in here, and then we're going to add items to this dictionary that we're going to return. Okay. Um, now in here we're going to add all our different payment methods. So payment method, let's copy them from up here. Basically, take everything out of here and put it down there. So payment method of Apple Pay, and that we'll use that as the key. And then the value, we're going to use obviously this this result here as the val the string value. I reduced my there we go string value there. Okay, and let's duplicate that so that we don't have to do more typing. Uh, let's go. I think we'll duplicate that three times to support all our three payment methods. Cool, yep. Uh, we want this to be Google Pay, I think. Google Pay, yep. And we want this to be cash. Okay, and just so in case I didn't explain that already, the reason why we're using a lazy dictionary is basically it will only um, be called or populated uh, as and when needed. That's what lazy loading kind of means for this dictionary. Okay, so and then we want to return this uh, temp temp dictionary. Okay, so that will populate our um, lazy dictionary okay and now we want to create a method that is going to do all the work basically so this public static method will return a string which will be our result which will be our value and it will um, basically we'll call it create and it takes in the key which is a payment method so we'll take it'll take in a payment method as a key okay um, and then in that method, we are going to return uh, this the result of this dictionary query that we're going to do. We're going to return the value of this query. Okay, and to query the dictionary, we just pass in the key. And in this instance, it will be whatever this uh, payment method is that is passed in. And that's basically it. So essentially, we've created a dictionary. We've initialized it to null. Um, we then lazy load it. So obviously, when it when this uh, method is um, invoked, uh, it loads up the um, the relevant payment methods, and then uh, we can use this method here to check. We can pass in a payment method, and it will return the relevant value um, attached to that. Um, as a, we'll, we'll pass in payment method as a key and we'll return the value of that key in the dictionary. Cool. So let us um, implement this now. So if we come up down here, we've created our new account. So let's uh, do, um, we can just do console or write line basically. Console or write line and we can call that payment factory directly because it's a static class. And we can call that method because it's a static method. And we can pass in the payment method of this account. So we can go account one dot payment method. Okay, cool. And what am I missing? I'm missing another bracket. And that should just work. So let's comment this out just in case we still need it.
because this might not work. Let's come it out and let's go. Brilliant. Payment made by Apple Pay. So it's it's worked as expected. So we can actually get rid of all these lines of code for just that one line of code right there. How beautiful is that? How clear and readable is that? That's 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 exactly what we want. So we we get the required result, and even better, we've abstracted away uh, the logic for uh, all this if statement logic that we had originally. So uh, an abstraction is another uh, key concept of object-oriented programming, which I'll explain to you in another in an upcoming video. But we've basically just taken away all that code, so the caller, caller only needs to use this factory, and it will get the required um, outcome that day. Um, they want now if they wanted to add another payment method so if um, which is more than likely going to happen so let's say we now support PayPal as well as another payment method method all we need to do is of adding another if condition we you know or uh, you know changing our switch statement just come down here and we can copy this line of code here just one line of code copy that down here and add that now as a new payment method uh, of uh, PayPal cool and then if we come up here and we say that this account we'll say another account we'll say account 2 just copy this save me typing laziest typer aren't I uh, to account 2 this person is it's called Sonia Red okay and they have a they support PayPal so let's do that and then again we print that to the console we just call our payment factory to check what um, payment method they paid with um, and we can print that out by just saying um, account to dot payment method uh, and that should print out payment made by PayPal. Perfect. Great. That brings us to the end of our video. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please look out for the next video in our channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.